I think the economy is doing really well. In fact, I'm calling it the Goldilocks economy. A couple of stats for you. There are more jobs available than people available to fill them. That's a big deal. And the Atlanta Fed is predicting, wait for it, 4.8% growth for our overall economy. Well, that's a moving target. It could change, but 4.8% growth is pretty good. And that gentleman on the screen right there is Sebastian Gorka, former advisor to the president. Mm -hmm. Sebastian, um, the mainstream media is ignoring this good economic news. But my question is, is the good news penetrating the media screen and getting through to voters? Oh, Stuart, I think it has to be. When, when you've got oil companies in America that are advertising $25,000 cash signing bonuses because of how strong the economy is. It doesn't matter what Anderson Cooper says on CNN. That news gets out there. When people look at their paychecks, when you see we have not 500,000, not a million, 5 million people who've already been given bonuses by their companies because of the tax reform. It doesn't matter what the Washington Post or the New York Times writes because they get that paycheck with that extra money. Is this the reason why the so-called blue wave is not a blue wave at all, it's barely a ripple? Well, first things first, let's get the colours straight. The colours were swapped about 12 years ago, oh. thanks to the left-wing media. If there's any party that's red, Stuart, it's the Democrats. So let's, let's talk about Conservatives <laughs> being true blue. You know that's true in the UK and elsewhere. Right, I do. Um, but, but, yeah, it's, 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 it's not even a trickle. I mean, it's just it's wishful thinking for those who still cannot comprehend what happened on November the 8th, 2016. They, they have nothing else to grasp on, and so they think there's going to be a Democrat wave. But if you look at the results yesterday, it doesn't look too good for the Democrats. All right, now, I've got to talk to you about Dennis Rodman. I hope you don't mind, but I'm going to talk to you about it. Oh, okay? please. Rodman <laughs> reportedly will be in Singapore for President Trump's summit with Kim Jong-un. What the devil is he doing there? He's just a glory hound. He's a publicity seeker. Um, who cares? I mean, really. This well, it is makes a man it a who, circus, look, doesn't it? It's a, a distracting we, circus. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't think uh, he'll be getting a lot of uh, photo opportunities at the summit table. This is a man who celebrated that regime as a guest of the regime repeatedly, a regime that, whilst we need to denuclearize the peninsula, remains a dictatorship. So Dennis Rodman is nothing more than a clown who's looking for more publicity. Overall, how would you judge the negotiations going as we move towards this summit, which I believe is, what, eight days away? Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's uh, going to be um, at the moment, at the moment, Stuart, Thanks to Secretary Pompeo, thanks to John Bolton, it's going exactly as we originally intended. Think of what happened. That letter was written, a tough letter by the president saying, don't insult the vice president, I'm closing this down. But he left that window open and he said, look, this is important to you and to us. If you want to do this, I'm open. Within, within a matter of hours, that envoy hand-delivered that, that letter to the West Wing. That's the art of the deal. That's the Trump effect. So, uh, fingers crossed, uh, nothing's done until it's done, but we are potentially on the brink of bringing some stability to that benighted peninsula. I think Kim Jong-un is in a box. Because if he walks away from these summits and does not denuclearize, What's he got? He's got more sanctions on him, more abject poverty in North Korea. And what's he going to do? I think, the, I think the man's been pushed into a corner by President Trump's hard line. Am I going too far? No, not only that, Stuart. Uh, the fact is he doesn't get that photo opportunity with the most powerful man in the world, Donald Trump. And not only that, if he walks away at any point now between uh, the, the beginning of the summit, guess who else is going to be very, very angry? And it's Beijing. And when you are North Korea and 90% of what you need to survive comes from China, you don't want Xi Jinping to be disappointed in you. Why would the Chinese be disappointed if uh, Kim Jong-un walks away? Because it's pretty clear that the Chinese administration, the Communist Party, has affected the turnaround in Kim's attitude. The, the, the fact that he went for that 
secret meeting mm -hmm. to China. That's not an accident. China's fed up with having a buffer state that is more dangerous than not having a buffer state. A buffer state is supposed to keep some kind of stability between you and the West. When you're launching ballistic missiles over the Sea of Japan, you are no longer good for China. It's just fascinating. Who would have thought just a few months ago that you and I would be sitting around talking about the likelihood of a summit one week or what, eight days hence, and it's looking good for President Trump? Who would have thought for one second, and Sebastian? And just 500 odd days into the administration's first term. You're having incredible. fun, aren't you? are having fun. I just know you are. Bro. Oh, completely. <laughs> it's a great time to be an American. Ain't that the truth? We're British accents, both of us. All right, Sebastian Gorka, <laughs> you're all right. Thanks for joining us, sir. Thanks, Appreciate guys. It.